Marty from React Studio. In this video I'm going to show you how you can install the Xanos snippet, install the backend, it's your Xano backend, and then hook it up with the pre-made to-do list app I've created with my React Studio. I will share the link, download link for this project file. Uh, it's, it will be added to the YouTube video and the, and the snippet page as well. So just head to the Xano snippets and find our React Studio to-do list example and uh, just install it from there. So the app itself uh, has a Xano backend with, with a lot of API endpoints and the project has a login screen, sign up screen and then to-do list screen and uh, details views and search and stuff like that. So let's let's first check how the app actual app looks. So there's a user, let's see John for example, John, and uh, test one, two, three, four. I'll just log in here, and then the app loads all the to-do lists for for John. And the there's a search page here where you can easily just ser search by adding any any kind of uh, search term here. Let's see, for example, main main. It it finds this this item here for for the as a search result and then we can go back and the, these are the to-do lists here I can create a new one here uh, just first select the theme where the the list will uh, belong and then just add a name for the for the for the list let's say this is test list let's create a new one it will appear here and here there are no to-do items here let's create a new one there's a validation there, so we can create this test item one two three one two three. Click add, and now we have a new to do item here. I can click it, and then I can change the description. Just something. This is the description, and just save, and it uses the API endpoint for saving the description for this selected. Item. I can add checklist item items here. Item one, add. Item two, add, and I can check and uncheck them, and these will reflect will be reflected back to the backend. I can change the status. It's a component that changes the state. So when I clicked it, now it has a state two. I can s set that this is in progress, and now it's in progress, and it's all also saved to the database. I could just close it and now we have it here then we can we can go back to the lists and uh, there's already a couple couple lists I've uh, included into them backend this has a uh, three to do to do items and one is not started let's change so that it's it's started it's in progress click that and now we have two and one is already done I can do logout here and I, I can do sign up here. If I do sign up, then I have to go to backend and connect this new user we just created to a certain theme so that that user will have a have a to do lists. So let's head, head to the backend. That's the interesting stuff. So this is the database. Uh, it has a user table. Obviously, it's uh, two users at the moment, Jane and John. And then there's a teams. There are three teams at the moment, development, accounting and board. You can create as many teams as you want. And then there's a team members table. And this contains all the uh, mem how the how the users access to a teams and to do lists. So basically John belongs to three different teams here and Jane only belongs to development. I can easily add a record here and just let's connect Jane back to the uh, chain to the, uh, let's say, chain would go to accounting as well. Just have to click it. Let's see, there's some sort of accounting here. Now chain, chain will see all the to-do lists uh, which belong to accounting team. And uh, finally, we have to-do lists table. Obviously, contains all the to-do lists or projects or whatever you want to call them. Then there's a to-do items and each item belongs to certain to-do list. 
and it's they can there can be n number of items for it to do a list so you can create 100 items that belong to one list and then there are to do checklist table and this is the same thing it's each of these rows belong to certain to do item and you can create as many as you want and then the api let's see this is the search to do items it has a search ter term here and then there's some logic for searching the searching the if the title and description includes this search term then we will return that as an as an array and load it to the ui that's it uh, there are many 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 api endpoints here these are not protected any other way than just user out uh, user th that user has, has to be locked in user so be careful this is just a demo app so for example if you want to get uh, get all the to do to do lists you could basically do it by using using uh, javascript so you have to create a logic here that prevents any of the users uh, seeing seeing the, uh, the using the api for calling getting the to do lists that 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 he or she doesn't have access rights to it but that's that's not that's a trivial thing to do and that's not important in this example so how do you get it so first download the react studio project file i've i've included in the description here and then this is the login gate there's a login button here you can see interaction here unlock gate that does the basically the the, the sign up not sign up but the login here here's the login gate settings if i just click here and there's the api endpoint and elements and then it saves the user id to a data slot data slots are sort of global variables for the app so we have the user id here and uh, we can use that for fetching fetching data and we also have the uh, authorization token that we use also when we are calling any of the apis and uh, this is the to-do list block uh, it's a screen and here's a component and inside the component we have a list here and this list gets all the uh, these are how the properties are linked and uh, the data source for lists is a data sheet called to-do lists so we just populate that data sheet basically an array in the code uh, from the back end and then we'll show a list here now it only has one item so that's why it shows like just one here and then we have a bunch of buttons and this is for the form fields and button that that adding new to the to-do list there's a interaction create just first do the validation that these fields have something and then we save data back to data data list to-do lists data sheet and uh, we get the to-do list name from the form field and uh, teams ID from the picker here and then we can just add a new one and that's a that's a basic stuff that you do with react studio in the to do items block there's there are a couple interesting components this is the change status component it has two states one is the the basic one and then we when we click this button there's interaction change state and we change it to two and the second state will be this one and each of these buttons they have a save data interaction plugin and then there's an api endpoint set to do item status and then there's a data slot which contains the id for selected to do item we've already collected in in the earlier phase in the ui and then there's a body uh, the method will be post and body will be status done basically that tells the api endpoint that we'll mark this check uh, this uh, this status for this to-do list item as done in progress we have the same thing but i've done it in different different way we create we give the status as a variable in the url here in the endpoint you can do it it depends on your api endpoints how do you want to do it and not started has the same thing it has a not started here so that's that's how the the react studio project uh, is built but let's go to the data part here so there are these are the data slots and here's the interest interesting stuff for example to do lists it's a data sheet 
and it will call this API endpoint here. But to get the API endpoint working, you have to connect to Xano first. So you just connect to Xano, click login, and then select the instance and stuff, and then uncheck all the tables. Otherwise, the studio will import these as a new data sheet. But I've already created those data sheets and hooked them to the API endpoint. So don't just uncheck all here and click OK, and then you're good to go. You have to just select the workspace here, basically the 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 app you've cloned into your own Xano, Xano backend. Just click OK and you're good to go. And how, how you can fetch data is uh, if you go to data plugin settings and select the Xano, here's the user login that we use for fetching data. So you have to add here uh, one user that has access rights to data that we can load here in the data sheets when we want to have some data when we are designing the app. It's handy to have some data in the studio in at design time, so we can we can actually we get all the all the uh, names for the uh, for the data sheets and the uh, stuff like that. So I've just used the John as an example. dot com and just add a password and login, and then you are you you are able to download new data. If I reload the data, we'll get all the live data from the server. I will just delete these extra ones I've created because we don't need those when we are designing the actual app. But when we generate the code by clicking open in browser or export react code, then it's hooked to a live data. So we are not using those data sheets basically that the data in a data sheets we have in a studio, we, we already are using the live data from the server. So that's it. Uh, that's how you can play around with the React Studio and Xano backend. And uh, hope you enjoyed this. And uh, if you have any questions, just head to the React Studio discussion forum and ask there, or or uh, leave leave us a just send us an email or whatever you want to do. But just download the Re React Studio first from the ReactStudio.com and then clone the Xano backend from the snippet and then just download the React Studio project file I've created for you and then just hook it to the hook it to the backend and then you're good to go. Thank you and see you in the next video.